Hi, hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to the channel. This is a new series related to MIMO, uh, MIMO in case of 4G, 5G, or FTM systems. So, in this video, I want to talk about uh, uh, the various topics. Like uh, first, I want to cover the basic configurations. Then, I will talk about the spatial diversity, and then uh, the spatial multiplexing. Then, I will enter into the physical interpretation of MIMO, and then we'll see merits and demerits of MIMO. Okay. Uh, before getting into the concept, I want to uh, mention that uh, the advanced topics like uh, zero forcing, MMSC, uh, receivers, all these things I will cover uh, in this particular series. If you are looking for such videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Also, uh, I will be spending a lot of time creating those videos. If you want to appreciate the hard work and effort which I am putting in, you can do it by subscribing to the channel. So, let's get started with the basic configuration. First one is CISO. For the sake of completeness, I have included this topic here. The transmitter will have one antenna, receiver will have one antenna. This is the equation, very simple equation. I, uh, I will not be considering the noise uh, in this video because, uh, you know, uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity and understanding, uh, I have made it zero. So, here we have got one equation but two unknowns. H1 is also unknown, X1, X1 is also unknown. We will not be in a position to solve this equation. Solution does not exist, but the thing is, there is a concept called channel estimation where you will know the channel coefficients. So considering that the channel estimation is already done and h1 uh, we already know so then we will say that we can say that uh, one equation one unknown so we can solve the problem and there is no issue here so let's move to the next configuration which is single input multiple output in which case the receiver will have two antennas so we will get two received uh, uh, signals y1 and y2 we have got two links h1 and h2 so equations y1 is equal to h1 x1 y2 is equal to h2 x2 pretty much straightforward we can write it in the vector form like this so here the observation is that we have got two links on those two links there is only one symbol which we can transmit and there is no other option to transmit to the another symbol x2 at the same time so which means that at the receiver we have the multiple copies of the same intended signal x1 so this is nothing but diversity diversity is all about having the multiple copies of the same signal at the receiver okay but now how did we uh, achieve the diversity we achieved the diversity in the spatial domain so from receiver antenna 1 and receiver antenna 2 we had the, uh, the same copies uh, uh, so this this uh, uh, diversity is called spatial diversity so moving into the next configuration multiple input single output in this from the transmitter i have got two antennas receiver just one antenna uh, uh, now I have considered that uh, the same symbol x1 is transmitted uh, from both the antennas. So at the receiver, what will be the equation? There is only one equation because we have got only one antenna. So y1 is equal to this is the equation. Um, as you can clearly see that uh, you know we have multiple copies of x1. Again, this is also a kind of spatial diversity. But uh, since now it is achieved because of uh, tx, it is called tx spatial diversity. So the thing is, the advantage of diversity is that you know we have got two links. The chances that both the links to go bad is very low. So it is a more reliable uh, communication, and uh, you know we can uh, we can uh, we can decode the signal x1 more efficiently. That is what uh, uh, the advantage of uh, diversity. So even though if one link goes bad, we we have other link where we can recover the signal, and vice versa also true. Okay. Um, in this case since at the receiver we have only one equation you know we could uh, uh, we could get only one unknown which is x1 let's say for example even though you want to transmit uh, the different symbol x2 at the same time uh, from the transmitter uh, you know at the receiver we will have still one equation whereas we will have two unknowns x1 and x2 uh, for this solution does not exist this is not feasible okay so here uh, we will not have an opportunity to increase the data rate what if i had one more antenna at the receiver so that is my next configuration which is MIMO. So in this case, the link would look like this. We will got four links and uh, I can write my equation y1 is equal to uh, in this form. Right now I consider you know x1 transmitting from both the antennas. So all four uh, uh, links uh, can be written like this. In the matrix form, I can write it like this. Okay. So then I want to you know. Uh, simplify this uh, uh, in this way uh, because this will be a very good interpretation uh, for me i will come in a moment to, in, to this now if you see this equation 
right we have got four links one two three four and uh, and on all these four links we have the, the multiple copies of the same intended signal so here here also we are achieving the diversity and here in this case diversity uh, is equal to number of uh, receive antenna to transmit antenna okay so total we have four here now what if i want to uh, you know transmit x2 from antenna uh, 2 of transmitter will i be able to recover both x1 and x2 uh, you know yeah, independently at the receiver so because right now we have two equations so now two unknowns will i be able to solve so i will write uh, this as x2 and this will become x2 now two equations and two unknowns x1 and x2 yes solution may or may not exist it all depends on uh, the channel matrix h we will see in the upcoming video what uh, under what conditions we can recover and under what, under what conditions we cannot recover but uh, right now let us say that we will be in a position to recover in which case we can obtain uh, you know x1 and x2 oh, x1 and x2 uh, separately in which case uh, we will have an advantage of higher data rate right so this kind of mechanism where you know uh, two, two different symbols are transmitted uh, across antennas and those antennas are separated spatially and we are actually multiplexing x1 and l2 in a spatial domain this is nothing but spatial multiplexing so spatial multiplexing advantage is that uh, you know your data rate uh, is higher and uh, even your uh, you know the spectral density is higher because spec here at the same time using the same bandwidth you are actually transmitting more number of symbols or more number of bits okay so spectral efficiency is more here we, we can derive the advantages and disadvantages of fiber very clearly one is you know it increases the data rate and special spectral efficiency um, through the through a scheme of the spatial multiplexing and uh, even uh, under uh, spatial diversity we can have a more reliable communication but uh, the main disadvantage with mimo is that uh, you know uh, to obtain x1 and x2 uh, we need to have a complex uh, processing at the receiver and and thus it makes the re receiver uh, receiver a little bit complex but in nowadays we have the luxury to offer such kind of uh, uh, complex uh, uh, processing uh, and hence uh, uh, this is fine and hence we are and uh, we are able to get very good gains in terms of data rate using uh, the spatial multiplexing concept of mimo okay so i want to mainly touch upon the, the interesting topic which is uh, the physical interpretation so that that is mainly from this particular equation what is it saying so y bar is equal to this is one vector okay h1 bar and this is another column vector h2 bar so from this matrix i have taken the column and i have put it here and the second column and uh, that is put it here right so which means that uh, you know this particular column vector along this direction x1 is transmitted and along uh, you know the column vector h2 x2 is transmitted so i am showing it in the picture so the channel matrix can be written as a h plane uh, where we will have both uh, you know uh, the x axis and the y axis let's say the first column h1 bar h1 vector uh, is represented like this where you know x1 is transmitted and in some other direction uh, where h2 vector represents uh, x2 is transmitted okay so this is the physical representation this is very much important to, to analyze uh, in our further videos uh, and uh, you know this will give a lot of uh, a clue on how to decode the signal and in what in, in what direction we should be uh, looking at to, to get uh, the intended uh, uh, symbol okay so one uh, clarity is that uh, you know if these two you know on a high level uh, what we can say is if these two are uh, orthogonal to each other then x1 and x2 we can uh, uh, you know get it easily if both of them are uh, uh, parallel or if both of them are uh, lying on the, on the same direction uh, then you know uh, different symbols x1 and x2 is not possible let us see these concepts in the upcoming video thank you very much have a great day please do subscribe bye bye